to start off with that I wanted to talk about was this TV series called Yellowstone. It's a Western TV show, nothing too crazy. Um, it's been all the rage in the States at the moment. I'm not really too sure why, because it's not an amazing TV. It's good enough to watch, don't get me wrong. If you don't have anything to watch, it definitely is entertaining enough for you to put on and kind of while away, you know, 40 minutes to an hour, or whatever it may be. But to say it's flipping Breaking Bad or The Wire or anything is really ridiculous. It's not on that level whatsoever. But somehow, I'm not too sure how they did it, right? Yellowstone is decent enough. But somehow, in the history of TV shows, I don't think it's ever happened, they've created prequels that are, if not better than the main show, but also have kind of added to the main show and kind of expanded the Yellowstone universe. So these prequels, one is called, I think, 1921 or 1923, one of them, and the other one's called 1883. And essentially, the prequels um, trace the history of the Dut of the, I think the Dutton, I think that's what they called the Dutton family, and it kind of gives you an idea of who they were prior to you finding out the modern incarnation of them in you know Yellowstone, and you kind of get this whole kind of like um, unofficial history of America, the Americas, indigenous people, um, you know, religion, capitalism, slavery. And what I like about it, for me personally, what I like about it, having been a big, 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 huge fan of Westerns, um, I don't know why, actually, maybe because my dad used to watch a lot of them. Yeah, maybe that is. Maybe my dad used to watch a lot of those type of movies. He was in a, in, into a lot of that kind of old, you know, black and white type stuff, you know, Clint Eastwood days. I think of things like, you know, The Good, The Bad, and Yagli. I can think of watching back in the day, um, Treasures of Sierra Madre, High Noon, um, Stagecoach, what else um hello high water that's a recent one um but i watched quite a few right true grit of course but i've watched many 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 westerns i'm a really big 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 fan oh yeah sorry obviously the main one and it being unforgiven and i guess maybe because it kind of harkens back to a day in age where things were maybe a little more simpler maybe life was people are just starting to figure out their positions in the world maybe things weren't as muddy as they were now i'm not really too sure why maybe there's a personal responsibility thing whatever it may be but what i do like about it and i do flip and give them a lot of credit for is there really um is there kind of pursuit for an accurate representation of what the world looked like back then there is no kind of unnecessary wokeness to it it just is exactly what you'd kind of imagine it to be in terms of you know, who the help is, who's working behind the bars, the kind of texture and tone of it, the brutality of it. It's all very real. And what I also like about it is that people would die. Like, you know, most of these shows that kind of depict this sort of stuff, the, the hero, whatever it may be, or the people that are kind of, you know, you determined to be quote unquote the good guys, they just find a way to survive. But in this, you know, in this brutal hellscape, which is f f weird to watch because the scenery and the landscape is fucking gorgeous, right? Middle America, parts, wherever they filmed this in, in America, is absolutely gorgeous. Like, gorgeous, gorgeous. The plains, the fields, the hills, the valleys, like, legitimately a place where you would legit go and try and fall asleep under the stars, right? But then you won't, you probably wouldn't because you don't want to get, you know, eaten by a mountain lion or something. But legitimately beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful landscapes all throughout. You can't deny it in any way, shape or form. But what I love about it, there's a parts of it where the family are kind of traversing across America to try and seek a better life for themselves, right? And their family. And back then, of course, there is no there is no way to kind of figure out or find out if the place you're going to go to is going to be what you think it's going to be until you go there. There is no way to get that message back to you. And sometimes people would, you know, send out signals or, hey, there's this new town we're building. Um, come over here for prosperity and the future for your family, school, something to do for your wife, whatever it may be doing. But they'll purposely get you to come, but then not allow you to send messages back. So it was a purposeful scam. So people were coming there under the guise that it was one thing. Then they arrive and they're like, oh, no, this is horrible. And it kind of reminds me of this movie I watched recently. I think it was on Netflix that kind of had a similar sort of angle a wartime movie uh about um the second world war where they essentially were depicting the enthusiasm i think of these austrian students before they went to sign up to the front line to, to be on the front line and they were thinking they were going to be part of this i don't know what they were going to for a revolution or something and they're really excited before they get there and then when they finally do get there 
they realize just how hellish it is it's legitimately a hell environment and they can't understand how different it is from the image they had in their head or the reports that they were kind of receiving back home when they weren't actually there so it's absolutely crazy but i don't know the fact that when they're traversing across the united states in 1883 there are so many encounters where people just die randomly right from falling off a wagon and getting kind of trapped underneath a wheel um, for getting attacked by animals at night getting stung by snakes and scorpions um there's a constant threat a co it, it, it seems sort of like it's, it, it makes a show incredibly tense there's always a threat of somebody coming to ambush you right these cowboys or wherever it may be just you're just minding your business chilling out and this hordes of cowboys come and try and ambush you if it's not them it's indigenous people who maybe see you as a threat and you don't you don't understand each other's language and so there's no way to kind of you know discourse and sort of like um stem any of that sort of hate it's just a constant barrage every single day right you feel like you're on on your back foot and it's pretty mad to watch but i do like it because i feel like it's like a legitimately one of the better accurate representations um, of what that world would have been like to live in in the real time so of course the acting performances from people like tim mcgraw and stuff and his wife faith hill they play the main you know main i don't know uh, uh actors in that in that series 1883 and their chemistry on tv is just so good um having it be a husband and a wife you know play a husband and a wife on tv screen is just incredible it kind of that chemistry and romanticism sort of leaps off of the screen and again i'm a bit of a romanticist when it comes to sort of stuff um i'm a little bit of a history buff as well so maybe i like this stuff as well but just for me you know i just like to see the accurate representation of history from time to time on tv because i feel like sometimes a lot of this sort of like woke mob can get a little bit too sensitive about how things were and they don't like to see that depicted again on screen but as much as those slavery movies can be annoying it is quite uh, it is quite important to see what that life was like so that you can take um you can't take solace in the idea that nowadays things have definitely improved and it's not as bad as it once was we have our issues but it definitely isn't as bad as people make it seem out to be but legit season one of 1883 is absolutely incredible i really enjoyed it i think the other one is called 1921 1923 i'm not too sure which one it is and that's been really good so far where i think we're two episodes deep or three i think so far on that one um and like i said i actually prefer the prequels to yellowstone yellowstone i've kind of started and stopped three or four times i've not really got too into it i think the longest i kind of watched it was up to about episode four of, of season one but i found the prequels i've still been able to run through them really really easily and they are w way harder to watch i have to be honest like because there's a lot of scenes in it that are quite you know quite disturbing and whatnot but if you're a fan of westerns like me i definitely recommend you check it out man 1883 is absolutely incredible i recommend you check it out i recommend you check it out